Hi folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful uh, breakfast tray or laptop uh, stand. So what I've done here is I've created a stencil of the profile and I'm just scribing that onto the plywood. Now the profile of this tray is really a U shape and I've cut the stencil about three quarters of the way so that I have a, a sort of a hockey stick shaped stencil. And that allows me to stagger the, uh, the, uh, the profiles up so that I'm using very little of the, of the plywood. In other words, if I use the full U shape, uh, I would use a lot more plywood, but this way I use less than a square meter to stack up all of the uh, pieces. So you end up with a long piece and a short piece. And uh, then when I lay them up, I join the short piece with the long piece and then invert it on each piece so that uh, I've got a side grain to side grain when I'm gluing it up. Okay, I've got my rubber gloves on and uh, I'm using a very uh, a slow, a slow hardener, uh, epoxy resin, with a slow hardener. So what that'll allow me to do is to build this up, put the clamps on it. Um, you can, you can use uh, uh, an air gun and, and nail it if you wish, um, but uh, this time I'm actually going to uh, use clamps and glue. So the slow setting glue will allow me to uh, move it around and uh, Get it in the right position. So, next morning, um, time to remove the clamps. Dried fairly good. So it's a matter now of planing this down, sanding it, and I'm going to cut a hole in here for handles, and that'll be it. So I'll use the uh, Arbitec power unit with the variable depth control, and I'll use the turbo plane first to just level this off. I do have to be careful though, because being plywood with the thin veneers, you've got to be careful to always pull the wood on, the cutter pulls it on so that it doesn't uh, tear the, the wood. Um, but shortly after that, I'll go straight to a very aggressive uh, sanding disc and then sand it all down. Temptation with sanding is to uh, concentrate on the areas where where you see that it, it's it's not sanded, but in actual fact, those are the areas you should leave till last. So, with a sander like this, it'll only take the high spots off first. So, you, if you want to get rid of these lower spots, then you have to keep working evenly all the way around until they disappear. Um, not not focusing on those spots in particular, but on the high spots. So a very simple technique, you just keep working until all of those low spots disappear. Right, the, uh, the planing attachment has got this lip around the edge so it's not possible to get right up close uh, to these corners and so I'm just changing to the to the chip catcher. Still got the dust extraction but it's not quite as good dust extraction as when you have the whole uh, shroud covering it. Um, having said that, uh, uh, it's pretty good. And now this will allow me to get right into these corners here. You do need a fairly aggressive sander. Um, um, you can use, and angle grinders are really good sanders, but it's much better if you've got a variable switch so you can slow it down because angle grinders are a bit too fast. So uh, with an aggressive disc though, you can remove a lot of wood very quickly. So 
thing with um, with plywood, when you smooth it out, you do get quite a few little voids and things, which um, I've got a very simple way of dealing with it. And that is, uh, I simply get some uh, some glue, normal PVA white glue, and I just push the uh, the glue into the holes. Like so there's just a few little pin holes and bits and pieces. Um, so I just do it like that. And then I just get a handful of dust, which I've got plenty of in my vacuum here. And you just put the dust over it. Okay, and rub it in. So then you've got matching filler. My apologies for the noise of the rain on the roof. Very stormy here. But, um, that's how I fill the holes. And then when I sand it, it's all gone. It's good for small holes, this method.